What is going on everybody and welcome to another video. Today we're checking out Geography Now Denmark. Now this was a request to do any Geography Now video and I look through a lot of them are very very long you know 15 20 minutes. Denmark's one is nine minutes so I thought let me do this one first we'll see how good this channel is I'm assuming it's good considering the amount of views and subscribers it has. We'll do Denmark. Denmark's a very interesting country. The most viewed video was Germany. Now I would have done Germany but like I said, it was long, plus we've covered a lot of stuff to do with Germany in the past in this channel, so we might as well do Denmark. It's just a different, something different, you know what I mean? But anyway, we're going to get into this. Um, the person who requested it, you would have seen them already. Uh, thank you for your request. Be sure if you want to see me watch anything, request it in the comments below of this video. I will look I will look into it, be specific, Be or send a link just so I know what it is. And if I can't find it, I'm sorry, I can't watch it, you know, that's just how it is. But yeah, be sure to subscribe as well to the channel so you never miss a video and of course click the bell so you actually never miss a video because then you'll have notifications on. But yeah, we're going to get into this video, Geography Now, Denmark, we're going to see what this channel is all about. Let's go. Remember in the Angola episode I mentioned how no, I, I went to Denmark one time and bought a sandwich that was $21? Well this was that $21. sandwich and my reaction was like, $21? Oh this better be the best sandwich I've ever had in my life. You got lucky. <laughs> It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbie, Legos, Vikings, and Roll Roll Mifflon. We got a lot to cover, so let's jump in. Ah, Denmark, the link between the rest of Europe and Scandinavia. So much to discuss. Denmark is classified as a Nordic country, hence mm. located in the Northern European region, even though it's kind of like the southernmost state in the Nordics. Yeah. Full disclaimer, ignore Wikipedia. I'm gonna pronounce the location names in their proper Danish context. So here, here we go. go. Denmark is made of the Uland, not Jutland, peninsula mm. that connects to Germany in the south, as well as 1,419 islands. Of those, only 443 are named and 74 are inhabited. With the largest island being Shelland, not Zealand, which is not to be confused with Dutch Zeeland, which is not to be confused with New Zealand, although they did get their I name- I can't take it! That's too much information! It is connected to Foon Island, not Finn Island, by the Great Belt Bridge completed in 1998. The country That's is divided into five bridge. regions, the capital being Copenhagen, located on yeah. Shelland. Copenhagen is home to a myriad of historical sites, palaces, statues, residential units that are all the same height and- Before we continue, I just want to say, I know so many capital cities in Europe, not because I study geography, not because I, I'm very interested in capitals, but because I've been watching football or to American soccer for so long that, uh, yeah, I have just seen in the Champions League and stuff all kinds of different, different team names. And most European teams, or a lot of them, especially in the smaller countries like Denmark, Slovakia, Slovenia, etc., a lot of their best teams have the city names in them. So yeah, that's how I know a lot of cities, but let's continue. Style with pockets of Side colorful, note. quaint, cozy shops and cafes and dangerous places nice, that you are man. not supposed to walk on. Now this is where things are going to get a little spiced up. And by spiced up, I mean freezing cold and covered in whale blubber. Denmark, <laughs> for those of you who didn't know, is a kingdom, one of the last surviving ones in Europe, and is currently under the headship of chain-smoking Queen Margaret II. These still fall under Danish sovereignty and make up the massive Greenland Island and the Little Faroe Islands. Both of these places are radically different from mainland in Denmark. For one, Greenland is primarily inhabited by native Inuit tribal peoples that live on the island and is 80% covered in ice year round. The Faroe Islands are a conglomeration of 20-ish mystical cloudy windy islands that have this crazy looking lake that looks like it's about to spill over the cliffs into the ocean. These two areas have their own self-governing home rule, otherwise only depending on Denmark for military, justice, currency, and foreign affairs. Otherwise, I mean, that's pretty much it. I mean, historically, they did try to kind of create an empire by colonizing parts of the Caribbean, Ghana, India, and then in the Nicobar islands in the Indian Ocean, but they kind of ran out of money and ended up selling everything to other countries. Too bad, it would be awesome to see people in the Indian Ocean speaking Danish. <laughs> Nonetheless, mainland Denmark is kind of like a fast-moving economic machine. Let's talk about how. Now, when it comes to land makeup, Denmark is pretty flat. I mean, the highest point, Mullehoy, is only about 170 meters tall and it looks like this. Otherwise, only about 13% of the country is forested, and including Christmas tree trees. plantations, and the rest is pretty much used for agriculture that can produce enough food to feed about 15 million people. It's about three times the size of their entire population. Good for you, Denmark. But one thing Denmark is actually famous for growing is non-produce plants like grass, fodder, and Christmas trees. The highly sought-after Danish Nordman fir has been classified as the Rolls-Royce of Christmas trees, and every year investors from Germany, the Netherlands, 
Netherlands and even the UK jump in at the end of November and grab whatever they can before it's gone. Now one thing you need to know is that like many other areas in the Nordic region, Denmark's weather can be quite dreary. First of all, mm. Denmark is the only Nordic country that doesn't really get a lot of snow. Denmark is kind of like the mud pit located below the jet stream blocked by Norway and the UK. This means that even though it gets really cold, pressure systems rarely cause snow. This is also pretty much why everybody dresses like a J. Crew fall fashion line model <laughs> on the streets. If you're gonna get wet and freezing, you may as well look good while doing it. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, pretty much the rest of Denmark is just rolling green plains with sandy beaches and quirky little islands that people like to hop over for camping trips in the summer. If we were gonna talk about Greenland and the Faroe Islands, we would get a radically different story of mind-boggling, captivating cliffs, bluffs, sea stacks, glaciers, fissures, icebergs, and mountains. If you don't know what a Mulan is, it's not this, mm -hmm. but this. This Mulan is large enough to swallow a school bus. What is that? Like a water? But we'll have to save that for another video that'll come out in 9,374 years. In the meantime, let's talk about the people. Now this is gonna get really fun. Denmark's people are really unique in their cultural, historical, and postmodern upbringing. First of all, the country has about 5.7 million people and is one of the <clears throat> highest taxed countries in the world. About 89% of the country identifies as ethnically Danish, about 11% are others. Some of the largest others. groups in the other category being the Polish, Germans, Turkish, Romanians, Tux. Iraqis, and Afghans. Now when it comes to Danish culture, there's a lot behind it, but in a nutshell, Vikings. Vikings pretty much had their start in what is now present-day Denmark and whom pretty much dominated all of the Nordic regions as far as New Finland in Canada to Estonia. Which is why most of the Nordic states and regions can pretty much understand each other when they talk. Danes, Swedes, Norwegians, and Icelanders can generally understand each other as they have the same basic linguistic structure. Sure, there are subtle discrepancies, but overall they can kind of get by conversationally. <laughs> Granted, there's a saying, the Norwegian and Swedish languages sound like dancing fairies, whereas the Danish language sounds like a dude with a potato in his mouth. By the way, anybody who wants to learn Danish, full disclosure, it's gonna suck. The J makes the Y sound, the Y makes the U sound, the V makes a W sound, the R makes a R sound, the H is silent half the time, a ton of the letters are never even used, and don't even get started on A, U, and O. I kind of discovered a little trick though when I went to Denmark. When speaking Danish, all you really have to do is kind of like pronounce the first part of the word that you you think makes a sound, and then just kind of like give up on the rest of the word. For example, I'm literally just listing names of places in Copenhagen that I've been to. Honestly though, you really won't have much of a problem getting around if you speak English. Over 80% of the entire country, mostly the younger generation, speaks proficient English to the point where they don't even need subtitles when watching American TV shows and movies. Also, keep in mind, most of the Europe, like I've been to some countries in Europe, mainly France is my the one I've been to Belgium. In Belgium, they speak like five languages. Like they, I don't know if they have a national language, but most people there they either speak. Fr most of them speak English. Even like if you go to a more thingy place, like a more rural place, someone who just owns like a sweet shop in Bruges or something like where we went to, they speak English. They understand mainly probably because they get a lot of tourists. But I went to France, and France is an interesting one because when I went to France. A lot of them do not understand English. Like even when I was at the airport coming back, I asked a woman for a hot chocolate. She did not know what that meant. Or she did and she was taking the piss out of me because she didn't give me the full amount. She gave me like half a cup and I paid good money for that. You know what? I'm not going to get angry at that. But yeah, most people in Europe do understand English to some degree just because I feel like English is the universal language. You know what I mean? Like even if it's not their national language, you kind of have to speak it if you want to move out of the country if you want to go abroad english is the key because most countries do speak english as opposed to their main language but yeah let's continue Greenland has its own language that is completely unintelligible as it's an Inuit language closer to the indigenous Inuktitut and Yupik languages found in Canada and Alaska. And Faroese is pretty hard for most Danish people to grasp as it actually has more words rooted in the ancient Norse language and it's actually more intelligible to Icelandic. Back to culture though, Denmark has definitely left its mark, whether it's notable figures like author Hans Christian Andersen, philosopher Søren Kierkegaard, or whether- Can you pronounce his name? That's actually how you pronounce his name. Wow. It's not Søren Kierkegaard. Oh, it's 
or whether it be the invention of the loudspeaker or Legos or their love of handball, their impeccable architecture, love of cuisine. Yeah, no mountain in Copenhagen, by the way, being voted the best restaurant in the world with plates that feature live ants and moss. If you're really going to get a feel for Danish culture, though, you kind of have to know about Janteloten and Hygge. The funny thing is, Danes are kind of brought up in a social mindset that is kind of integrated into their subconscious known as Janteloten, which kind of translates to something like, you are not better than the crowd, which I know sounds kind of depressing, but it's really trying to instill a sense of equality and communal cooperation. Hygge translates to something like, spend good times with friends and family, and it's like a cozy thing. Of course, Denmark is known for being ranked one of the happiest overall countries, even though they are also kind of one of the highest ranked consumers of antidepressants as well. But hey, they still pull off everyday life looking oh so good, even if it's during one of those really loud annual emergency drills. Okay, Christine, explain what's happening right now. Denmark is testing the sirens for uh, <laughs> warfare. Yeah, when we're being attacked by the Germans again. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm really, really scared right now. Let's run to the security basement. <laughs> the Germans are coming. Speaking of Germans. Now, we all know that one person we're all kind of jealous of because they're kind of rich, well-adjusted, and have a ton of friends, and they're like kind of good-looking. Well, that's Norway. Denmark is a little bit rockier. No, but seriously, for such a small nation, Denmark has a huge entourage of friends, and it's almost kind of hard for anyone in the world to dismiss them at a party. As a founding member of the EU and NATO, Denmark has had roots planted in diplomacy for decades. First off, Denmark generally gets along with Germany. Business between the Germans is a hugely integral part of their economy, and Denmark acts like the gateway to scan Scandinavia for them and the rest of Europe. The US and the UK are incredibly close as both tangible and cultural imports have been established for centuries. For a while, the Danes even took over parts of the UK, which is why to this day the English language still retains hundreds of Old Norse derived words like leg, dog, and window. The closest friends, though, would have to be the Nordic countries Finland, Sweden, Norway, and Iceland. These four are without a doubt Denmark's closest friends, even though Sweden and them have kind of had more wars and battles historically than any other two states in the world. They've moved on and grown up. Out of the Nordic countries, though, Norway would probably be considered their best friends. Danes are obsessed with Norwegians and often consider Norway the girlfriend they took away from Sweden. In conclusion, Denmark is the rich, rainy rascal that always seems to show up on time for every party, but somehow gets all his work done in an organized, efficient manner. Stay tuned, Djibouti is coming up next. Right, that's the end of Geography Now. Denmark, I, uh, how many countries has he done? He must have done, uh, I, I, I just feel like this channel has done many, 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 many countries. And we can check them out slowly Everybody but surely. Me. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've done a ton of countries. A ton. So yeah, we, we can check out some of these countries in the future. Be sure to let me know your suggestions. If it's this channel that you want me to watch or if it's um, another video just to leave it in the comments this is a great video great channel very educational it's always nice to learn about new countries and learn about their cultures especially as me some as someone who hasn't been to too many countries in my life i haven't been that far around the world obviously i want to travel in the future but right now it's not feasible for me but yeah you guys let me know what you thought of this video let me know if you've been to denmark if you're from denmark and yeah Suggest a video, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.